Look, uh, Nick, I'll start with you. We, we start. We saw the news this week about Waymo. You've been following this sector for years, decades now, maybe even. How did this news square with the way that you're thinking about the autonomous vehicle sector at large? And, and what sort of reflections have you had? The way I think about the Waymo story, I mean, this is a company that's been around uh, for 15 years, uh, basically grew up inside of Google, now Alphabet. I think of this uh, from a, a sort of editor perspective in three buckets. There's the business story, there's the technology story, and then there's a cultural story, and all of them are fascinating. Um, and our discussion earlier this week was prompted by the fact that Waymo, in one of its original markets uh, in the Bay Area, is expanding uh, to uh, freeway service, finally, uh, after all these years. They've been you know, working on city streets in San Francisco and elsewhere. And now this just opens up a ton of new possibilities in the Bay Area, also Los Angeles. Uh, right. You know, anybody who's driven in LA understands that it's a city of freeways. So uh, this has uh, business implications, it has safety implications, and it has some very interesting cultural implications that we can we can talk about. Uh, right. But, um, uh, and, and Phoenix also is the other area where they're expanding. So. Um, and then next year, uh, they're planning on expanding to a lot of new markets. So we're going to see the Waymo story kind of really jump in terms of its visibility uh, in the public consciousness. So can Nick outline for us a couple of different ways in which this is going to impact the world, the business angle, technology angle, the cultural angle, there's the safety angle. Which of those angles do you think people aren't talking about enough that that you've really been thinking about? You know, I, I think the cultural angle is amazing. There's There's a stat. You know, in San Francisco, they're all over the place, right? You see Waymo's everywhere in the city. And the churn on them is very high, meaning people take one or two rides and don't take another ride, which looks kind of odd, except huh. what they've realized is every tourist who comes to San Francisco takes a Waymo. It's like a ride that you take when you're in San Francisco, like a cable I, car. Have you, have, you taken, have you taken one? I did, I did exactly that, and I videoed it, and I shared it with my family. And <laughs> it, it is, I was a total tourist. but. It is. So I live in New York. And so, you know, we don't have them yet, but they, uh, I think people love these things. I think it is people talk about them. People look at them when they drive by, cause you can see all the tourists in San Francisco all the time. I think like it's an exciting technology that people, people think is really cool. And that, I don't think that, you know, in all the projections I was reading, you know, projections of like the growth of, you know, sort of the next few years and how, you know, it's going to be, you know, a, still single digits uh, penetration in the markets for the next yeah. few years. And I don't know if that, I don't know if that's right. You don't know if that's right in terms of how, how do you think it might go differently? More, you know, as, as soon as it, it lands in a city, it'll be embraced. And, um, and the real constraint is going to be the number of cars they can put on the road. Nick, how, how does this compare with how think people were thinking about it 10 10, 12 years ago, was this faster or slower than than the estimates may have been back then? I think it's been slower. I mean, I joined the information, uh, I think, seven years ago, and um, we were very early on uh, in our coverage of the autonomous vehicle sector, um, including ride-hailing services like Waymo. And it really did not seem at that point like... Um, I, there were a lot of startups, right? Uh, and there was a lot of capital going into the sector, but there was still an incredible amount of skepticism about whether the Waymos of the world could achieve this, you know, the kind of levels of safety required to to launch these uh, different services. And so it's really kind of, you know, like um, under our, our very noses has emerged as um, this very normal thing to do in places like San Francisco. And, you know, my view is that when, uh, you know, they're testing in New York with human drivers right now, just sort of mapping, not taking passengers, but when it lands in places like New York, um, that uh, it will become even more normal and uh, just an inescapable part of kind of city life. So can I, I and Nick, you, you've taken one, right? You, you, you're on the West Coast. Yeah, you, you must have. So I seem to be the only one who hasn't taken one yet, okay? And, and, and I'm, I'm feeling a bit left out. But I will say, as somebody who hasn't taken one, I mean, gosh, you could tell me it's safer. I don't know if I believe it. Can, is there not going to be, I mean, I, I know you're talking about the cultural angle here, but mm -hmm. you don't think there's any convincing to do of people saying like, hey, this is the future? 
Well, you know, yeah, of course. I mean, I know I've talked to people who say I would never do that, but they're they're safe. I mean, they're they're better. At least what we've seen so far is, by and large, they're better drivers than people. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, to to take us into you know the most boring realm. I mean, there's a whole discussion in the world of car insurance about how it's going to lower insurance costs because they get in many fewer accidents. So, I mean, and when you sit in the front seat of one of them and you see the cameras and you see what the car is seeing, you realize that the car really does see everything. Right. And, you know, right. they see the cyclist, they see the, the traffic light, they see whatever. Um, and, and, uh, and you realize how, how much you may not see as a driver. So I don't know. I think people will be convinced. So Nick, let's take it. Let's take this into the realm of of you know put our our reporting editors and and journalism hats on here. I, I wonder what the big questions are for you as you think about this technology, and and maybe the best way to think about that are all the different players that are involved. We obviously have Tesla that has grand ambitions in this realm. Waymo is a little bit further ahead. As you think about the reporting questions for 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 journalists and for our newsroom, what do you think are the big questions that that still have to be answered? Well, I have some news to drop here. You want me to tell you? Okay, let's go there. <laughs> All right. So one of the big questions is uh, in the announcement from Waymo this week, uh, it, it, it's going to San Jose Airport, which is uh, crucial you know, for people down the peninsula in the Bay Area. It was not uh, announced that it was going to go to San Francisco Airport or that it was launching there. They've already talked about uh, the fact that they're testing it in San Francisco Airport. So I reached out to San Francisco Airport, um, and they said in the next few days, the airport um, is planning to approve phase two of Waymo testing, which goes from uh, having a human uh, driver uh, in the Waymos into having a... um, autonomous uh a driver you know a self-driving vehicle uh with um uh not with the public as passengers but with i think waymo employees and sfo employees so and then eventually phase three is you know full-blown commercial service so by next week it sounds like we're going to start to see waymos uh that are actually taking uh uh you know passengers of a sort just not public passengers so um Getting people to the airport is going to be crucial. I mean, that's mm-hmm. uh, it, it's important for a variety of reasons. That's a whole that from a business perspective, uh, the gross dollars of a um, of a uh, of an airport trip are much higher. I'm not so sure about the profit margins because there are a lot of fees associated with airports right. in and out of them. But uh, but certainly, I mean, to anyone who's taken a, a an Uber to JFK or something like that in New York, these are you know hundred plus dollar rides very often. So. Um, uh, so that's going to be really important to see it go into places like that. And then I'll just say on the, on the cultural, uh, uh, discussion that we were having before, I am really fascinated to see how, um, how people just start to use this in their daily lives. Um, there was a, a tweet that kind of went viral this week where someone was, uh, 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 raising the possibility of effectively Waymo hotels, uh, which is the concept of, you know, you, you know, you can, you, you can hop into a, a Waymo and drive it down, have it drive you down the peninsula and take a nap in the back seat of it. Uh, oh, there you go. So, <laughs> and, or get your work done or whatever, and be in solitude in, in this car. And, you know, whether or not that happens, we'll have to see, but I think the possibilities here are, um, are, are, are kind of fun to imagine. Ken, so talk about the Tesla component here because you know you you edit the Electric, which is Steve Levine's n- yep. newsletter, and Tesla has had grand ambitions here. What sort of questions are you thinking about here with respect to the competitive dynamics? Well, I, I mean, I think they they're way behind. I mean, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, the rollout is still slow. They're still not taking um, you know doing commercial service. Uh, in Austin, where they've talked about it, and they're still limited. They're uh, limited by the geography where they can go, where they're gonna where they're gonna drive. I mean, I, I think you know, and and frankly, the pressure on Tesla and on Elon Musk is is very high. So, I mean, I think they they have to get it together. I mean, the, their technology is different. You know, they're not using lidar, and that is um, it's it, they you know Musk says he's right, but it's a bad. Else it's it's certainly a bad. <laughs> Yeah, everyone else is doing it differently. So um, yeah, so I, 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 I mean, I think they're just under a lot of pressure, and uh, you know, the question for them is safety too. If they, if if they have problems, safety problems, it's really going to set them, and they've had them. 
uh, it's really going to set them back. And Waymo's, you know, track record since it's been, you know, taken passengers has been pretty good. So, I mean, very good. So like, I think that that gap is really serious. Right. Great. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on. It's, uh, it's always great to get folks uh, on the show who have been studying this, this space in the context of the broader technology story at large. And so thank you to you both for inaugurating us for the first Editor's Cut. We'll have you back again on soon. That is Nick Wingfield, our features editor, and Ken Brown, our finance editor here at The Information.